Hi everyone. This is what we've been working on. Bit of a mess. But this side has a lot of potential. So what I was looking at was thinking, what are we going to make it into? It's a long, thin shape. And uh, so I thought this bit here, you know, we could fold up. And that one down. And what I'm looking at is what what can we make that's useful? Well, we could have, I do like that. And then that flap over the top. And we've got quite a pretty uh, front there. Quite a pretty back. And the bit here that isn't doing a lot, it's kind of covered, so we can still do stuff. But it helps to sort of have an idea at this stage and then I can think about what I might want to do uh, as regards to where the fold is, what's going to happen, which bits do I need to concentrate on, well both of those, not so much this one so I'll just put a bit of a, so that I know that that's kind of where I wanted to do it, so you could use that to carry things in or put you know, if you want to do things like that, you can actually do dividers here and you can put, you know, maybe your little nail file or something delicate. You know, whip it out and grab your lingerie out of it. Well, all right. So we've decided on that and that's good. And the next thing we would do is just show you here, we're all, we're all attached, which is good. On the first one I was showing you how we went outside the edge and sort of started to amalgamate them into one almost as like you bought a piece of cloth like that but it's textural. So we've got a, a nice you know a continuation of this flower and a lovely rounded theme and we've used that as the way to attach. We've attached up through here on this one here we've done little lines you know and I'm quite liking it. So the other thing we did was this. We put a bead in in the last episode and we did a few of those lines again, this time out from the center. I did some white ones out on there. It's held down. Yeah, we may want to hold more down as we go. Anyway, and the only other thing I've done is I just used some plain old cotton. So plain old sewing cotton. I used double like that and I started to think okay well I'm gonna attach this and this um and I might just fill in the edges whilst I'm at it so I don't know if you can see I hope you can see but I've done some chain stitch just little separate chains I've even gone over here and done a few you don't really notice them but I mean it's just that extra detail isn't it You could put it in a different colour. You could put it on the cream, and on the beigey caramelly colour instead and it would show up more. But that's what I'm saying. I, I will continue to attach things down at the same time as I'm thinking about what would be nice here. What makes it flow into the next thing? And this lace here is flowing into these squares, you see. I like that. These ones here are flowing into three different pieces. This looks like it's in the background and this flower has come to the foreground. So you can see what we're trying to do, I think. All right, I think we're, uh, we're caught up. So I'll just grab some threads and we're sticking with neutral. I'm gonna grab some beads as well, show you how to do a bit of beading. Um, we've already put some of those big ones there, but some little finer beads would be nice, like, uh, well, okay, remember, we can always look at this for inspiration. I do. You know, we've got single beads. We've got strings of beads. We've got all kinds there. We've got some here where we use it in the gaps in the, in the flowers. Do you see? One, two, three. You can add, when you're going up with your needle, through three or four down. And direct the line that you want it to go so that's a lot of fun but look at that just the the line of the beads there really 
really does help that flower along from what is basically an ordinary flower. And this, they're little short bugle beads, but they are really good too, but they catch the light and but they're subtle. And in the gaps, I just used it in the gaps. See, all the way down, just to sort of make it all flow together. So we'll try a few of those things here. That's a gold thread that I've just used. Can you see it goes around, around that, and then around the petals? I think that's a chain stitch, actually, just to make it that little bit thicker so it would show up a little bit better. Same there. So, you get the idea. Now, I've just grabbed out a, a box of cottons. This is one of my more tidy boxes of cottons. And I'm just looking and I'm thinking, okay, well, there's a nice colour that's virtually that colour. So we'll have one the same. And uh, what else have we got? Oh, look at that. That's a thicker cotton, but it's got a little touch of different things in it. We'll get it out. And uh, that's a gold colour. That could be useful. A brownie color similar to that so I'm not sort of going too far outside the the um the realm and that one's another pearly one very fine more of that isn't it or maybe a lighter one so you see what I'm doing I'm picking colors that are in it I'd also go white you know, if you wanted to, see how I've gone towards the gold with this, so I'm just following that. But if you wanted to bring in, you know, some nice delicate kind of pinks, you could. Or greenish. You know, more like that. So what I'm saying is you can turn it to the direction that you would like it to go. See how those ones have got a touch of green to bring into it. These ones have got a touch of pink. Maybe you like the antique mauve look. Or maybe it's these pretty peach colours. You see? So a lot of those things would fit. I don't know that I'd want to put them all in. I'm going to head for mostly neutral and something else. But... Uh, yeah, it's interesting to know what, what you can do, you know. So, and this is a good blender. See how it's got a tiny bit of white and a dusky pink and a yellow. I mean, that could easily go towards yellow colours. Very pale. But they would go in as well. So, it's... Colour is really important and, uh, you know, your choices... See, I'm going to get rid of the pinks because I don't really want to go pink. And uh, what do I have? Hmm. Maybe even you, but I... See, now grey would be perfectly fine as well. There's our colours. We had this gold. We know we're going to bring in more white. Um, it's always looking before it in my button box. See, you could bring in a lovely little tinge of pink, couldn't you? Look at these tiny little delicate buttons. Be very nice for the centers or sequins or, or something, wouldn't they? So that's a possibility. Or, you know, these ones are pearl, mother of pearl kind of ones. They'd be nice too, the little white ones. But what I'm saying is, see, that's 50 cents for all of those. 10 cents for this little bag. Um, I don't know how long I've had them. But that's the thing, you collect these little things that you think, oh, that's useful. Tiny buttons, always useful. Uh, the other thing I dragged out was, uh, is there anything in here? Uh, maybe the gold. That would be all right. Oh. Now this one's a pearl, you see. I don't have to use two threads of it or anything because it's thick enough to show up as it is. A chain that's detached so holding that out the way I'm just going to put my needle in where I came up or virtually where I came up 
and underneath I'm just going to do a little stitch and see how I've held this out of the way when I go like this it's caught in a bit of a loop and then if I just do another little stitch just the other side of that loop it anchors it so but the problem was that it it was an old thread and it broke on me and having two strands one of them broke and then it was a pain so I stopped it I'm going to start again here now and this should be fine and show up better anyway so I'm just going to put it where it was there's my loop and down again and then I'm going to go up here change direction just like a, you could just do a seed stitch if you preferred in fact we might do that next but it, I like it because it fills in the gaps don't have to fill in the gaps but like I said it's sort of like uh, making the whole thing into one uh, pattern so we can also these crochet flowers tend to shrink up so you can you pull bits out if you want. I'll use that thread that matches it anyway and hold it whilst I've got it on. Not too worry because this is going to be in the um in the seam actually so I'm just skipping across to another area really and we can do some seed stitch and seed stitch is even simpler it's just a little stitch in different directions and sometimes I'm going up to hold something down yeah so it looks like you planned it but you, the whole thing is you're not really planning, you're just flowing. So, okay, we've got a little bit of seed stitch there. I might use it as well to hold this funny little end down. Make sure that goes in there. And I, I tend to just flow and, and uh, see how this now has led me to here. That led me to here. That, I thought, oh, it's the same colour. I can just do a stitch here and there. That led me to this little gap. I thought, oh, why don't I bit of seed stitch there? This here has led me to this flower here. And I'm thinking, why don't I do one stitch in the centre? Then that's going to hold that leaf down. You see? And I could even, if I really wanted to, I could do some like that. And now we're really holding it down through the centre. Making sure that I'm through those two things there. And down like that. like that where is it leading me it is leading me over here to this other leaf and really we could do the same thing there for continuity but I've got a tiny bit more so why don't I use it to hold that that little petal down there Right, I'm going to use this other one now. That'd be nice there. So we'll do that. And I'm going to go up here. Not on the underside and I'm ready to go. I'm just going to go, you know, hide the tatty edges underneath other ones. So that's it. And can you see how this has net, net in between uh, the embroidery there? So I'm just going to, I think, stitch in the net. I'm just going to go out like that. And catch the tip of that one in. And back in 
into you. Maybe I'll just extend outside, right outside the edges, see? How's that? See how I grabbed? See how I grabbed this one here at the same time as I'm going in? So I'm always reattaching things in, um, in different ways. Always catching it in. And eventually it will be very well sewn together if you keep doing that. See? And I'll do the same going back in. And I'm going to grab that flower on my way past and in. I'm going to go this one as well, back in. Alright, so I've done that. So what do you think? We could add to it. See how we've got those lines? Now we could add to it. We could do that again down here if we liked it. One thing will lead to another. That's what your little creative mind is doing all the time. It's seeing the patterns. And, uh, and playing with it. Just finding the time to play. I'm sorry if I'm a mess again. I was out sawing timber before this. Ah, oh, now, where were we? Oh, I'm going to do the same here just because I liked it. And I'll see where, where that goes. Just like the idea of it. And out. And... It's like layers in a garden, isn't it? look like our, our fern is leading into that flower there. There we are. As easy as sewing on a button. Here I just wanted to show you I'm using the rest of this lovely variegated thread and I'm doing a fly stitch. One underneath the other it gets larger uh, towards the bottom and it ends up looking like a little fern and now some beading so I'm going to use these little bugle beads and uh, the thing about them is that you have to have a needle that's fine enough to go through so pass your needle through and back out again of the bead to see if it's going to work so I'm just using a couple of strands or a doubled over piece of plain old uh, sewing cotton up from the bottom I'm going to stitch this little flower um, doily down on my way to a blank space and in that blank space here I'm going to be ready to bring my needle up and then thread a bead on it. Now there's different ways to thread a bead. You can keep it in a little container there and use your, the point of the needle to try and pick one out like that. Or you can pick them up on the end of your finger by just dabbing them into it and just pick one up like that. So all you're doing is needle up through your bead and then needle down again. You know, just the size of the bead away. And I like doing it like seed stitch. So they're all sort of going in different directions. They look higgledy-piggledy. So that's what I'm doing. And uh, I'm just adding a few here. And then I'm taking it down a little bit and just making it just a little sprinkle heading out. Well, let's have a closer look at some of the things that we've done and where we're up to so far. This has uh, been a wonderful project and I think there's going to be plenty more to come. So we'll keep some of the more intricate beading and different things for the next episode. And I hope you have enjoyed watching this if you have. Don't forget to press like and subscribe. And uh, hopefully we're going to be doing plenty more and uh, more new exciting things. So once again, thank you for watching me and all of my contacts are on the links below. Thank you.